Welcome. In this online self-paced e-learning module, I would like to accomplish two objectives. The first is to give you an informal and intuitive refresher on elementary math, particularly referring to calculus. And the second one is to present you some intermediate mathematical preliminaries. Both will be relevant for the forthcoming classes of the course. I will start with two quotes. The first is by Richard Feynman, a prominent physicist, an amazing science disseminator and Nobel Prize winner in 1965. He wrote, to those who do not know mathematics, it is difficult to get across a real feeling as to the beauty, the deepest beauty of nature. If you want to learn about nature, to appreciate nature, it's necessary to understand the language that she speaks in. And then another favorite quote that I would like to share with you is by Albert Einstein, who doesn't need any introduction, who has been amazed by the fact that math and nature are fitting uh, together. How can it be that mathematics, being after all a product of human thought, independent of experience, is so admirably adapted to the objects of reality? At the same time, I would like to use the words of a prominent biologist, Edward Wilson, considered the father of biodiversity and sociobiology, warning that no strong mathematical skills might be needed. He says, during my decades of teaching biology at Harvard, I watched sadly as bright undergraduates turned away from the possibility of a scientific career, fearing that, without strong math skills, they would fail. And I agree with him that this mistaken assumption has deprived science of an immeasurable amount of sorely needed talent. What I would like to present is in the spirit of what is minimally required for computational neuroscience. In the bottom part of this slide, you see a picture of Andrew Axley, Nobel Prize winner together with Hodgkin in 1963 for their work in dissecting the excitability of nerve cells. He was a British electrophysiologist and you see it on the left in a photo depicting him with a microscope, which is a tool for biological investigation. But at the same time, he did not use only the microscope. He also used what you see on the right, which is a mechanical calculator. Let me give you the menu for this first part of the elementary math refresher. I will briefly mention and, and uh, explain again the concept of function of one variable. And then I will immediately move to a more intuitive understanding of a function by the meaning of the graph or the plot of a function. And I hope that I will manage to successfully offer not an in-depth mathematical description, but rather an intuitive and hands-on insight on what happens to the graph and therefore to a function when you perform elementary operation, such as adding or multiplying constant factors to a function. And I will conclude this part reviewing the concept of a constant function or a straight line or an exponential or a logarithm. These are all the functions that we are likely to see extensively during the classes. I would also like to invite you to put your hands on and to try to play with the math. And there are two possibilities actually. The first is to point your web browser to the address here indicated in this slide below and the other one is uh, will become clear later is going to be using a link made available on the GitHub repository and using Google Collab. You won't need uh, to know the details, but you will be able to play with buttons and sliders in the same way that I will demonstrate uh, in a moment. What is a function of one variable? The way I explain it to myself is involving a kind of mechanistic black box. This black box has an input slot, like where, for instance, I could introduce a coin, and it has an output compartment, where something is being spit out whenever an input is presented. 
More precisely, a function is a relation between two sets of elements. They can be number, but they can also be other elements, not necessarily numerical elements. And it's important that this relation links to every element of the input set, one and only one element in the output set. In this case, you see this relationship between shapes, colored shapes, and colors, input and output. There is another way, which is maybe a little bit more detailed when the elements of a set are numerical, to express a function. And this is by tabulating all the possible values of the so-called independent variable, here indicated by x, and for each of these elements indicating the only one element corresponding to it, the element called y. Please note that I'm using x and y completely arbitrarily. These are just names, so don't get too much attached to those names. Another possibility, which you might have been more familiar given your use of computers and of big data science nowadays, is the use of graphs. And maybe the people of my generation, or maybe older than me, were familiar with the Cartesian plane while playing Battleship. So every point can be identified by coordinates, horizontal and vertical. And therefore, the set of points expressed by the table, therefore corresponding to a function, can also be indicated by uh, a plot on a Cartesian plane. You actually see here, in red, indicated the plot of a parabola. Then there is also a final way to express a function, which may or may not be possible to, to do that in a concise way, using mathematical symbols, operations and expressions. Combine them together and compose uh, together. A biologically relevant example of a function is depicted here. This is an experimental recording coming from a cellular electrophysiology experiment in which, as a function of time, that is the independent variable, the electrical potential expressed in volts has been recorded in two locations of a neuron. You actually see in grey or in black how the voltage of this cell is changing in time. It goes up and down and this transient that you see here it's called the nerve impulse. And we will have ample chances to discuss about this during the course. I used the word independent variable a moment ago to distinguish from dependent variables. What I mean with variables is like the concept of a bucket. And I hope that you are convinced that a bucket is just a container. So I can maybe change the name or the shape of the container. It doesn't really matter. I would like to use the word variables as opposed to constant factors which are known. Usually independent variables are not known or are assigned and dependent variables are depending on the numerical values of the independent variable. So f of x precisely makes explicit that once x is chosen independently, then y is depending on its value. Let me go to the concept of the graph of a function. And to do this, I will use the website that I indicated a moment ago in order to plot a generic function, this one that I uh, displayed here, where I combined operations like addition, subtraction, square root, power, and ultimately this and, and gives rise to the following plot. So this particular function that you see here has been plot using the website. And you see that, that to every specific value of the x, it exists only one value of the y. This has been depicted, depicted by the set of uh, points, blue, that are giving the impression of a continuity. This is the website that I was talking about, and you actually see the expression that I placed, and I would like to invite you, using this or the other website that I described earlier, to actually play, to look what happens if you actually start changing numbers. So what happens if here, I, instead of plus one, I put plus 10? or how the plot changes if I add a minus in front of uh, the expression. Please give it a try so that you are not remembering things by heart, 
but rather you are exploring actively what elementary operations and what is the consequence of the graph of changing values and numbers or operations. I would like you to consider the consequences on the graph of a function of very elementary operations and these are depicted here. So they are adding or multiplying a function by a constant. And there are several ways. Let me talk about adding and subtraction, addition and subtraction. You actually see here that you can add something in a way outside, forgive me for these abstract terms, the function. Or the number that you are adding can be inside the argument. So it can be on the independent variable. So you are basically replacing x to x plus 6, whatever it occurs in a mathematical expression. Of course, given the graph of a function like the one that I showed you a moment ago, you could go ahead and replace, like in a word processor document, doing search and replace. Whenever you find x, you replace x plus 6, or at the end of the expression you may subtract 1, like indicated here. But I would like you to develop an intuition, very simple intuition, on what are these operations corresponding. I will not limit myself to the addition operator or subtraction, which is the same, but rather I consider multiplication or divisions, which is the same. And once more, I will consider multiplying factors in a way externally, if you want, like this 0.1 or this minus 1, or internally. Once more, forgive me for this incorrect and wrong abstract expression, just to mean that I will put the factor, in this case it's minus 1, in this case it's 2, inside the argument, so just replacing the independent variable. 